Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Brittany Bond, and I am so excited to share with you today one of my very close spiritual sisters, Moni Crystal. How would you like to introduce Moni yourself? Crystal. Moni Crystal. Um, thank you for being on the show. And I'm s- if you're watching visually, we are in her bed right now. Hello. Which Welcome is to my bed. <laughs> very sexy. I was like, are we going to record some other type of video <laughs> right now? <laughs> um, but I wanted to give a little intro about you that first off we, our birthdays are very close and our astrology is very close we're both like mo- sun in scorpio i have moon in scorpio she has moon in pisces and we're both rising aquarius so yes. lots of sim- basically the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so many like life similarities also just yeah. b- working in sexuality and interested so much in empowering women and like around somatic work and and then also community based and so I love I just love you mm. so much I love you too. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to share more about you with my world of amazing people who are listening um, and also just share more about how we are empowered women especially around our sexuality yeah. and just in life in general because I think that that is like in our world, this is very normal yeah. or, you know, pretty normal. Like we have tons of friends who are super empowered as women, like badass bitches. <laughs> um, but I don't think that in the the outer world that is actually very normal. Or, or uh, maybe a different way to put this is empowered women that are very um, deep in our feminine, you know. Because I feel that a lot of women in the, the matrix or whatever you want to call it, they're very they have to be or they're choosing to be more in their masculine in order to feel safe to be in that world because mm. it's a very masculine world but anyways i'm talking a lot so <laughs> i want to hear how are you how are you doing today well i'm a bit snuffy yeah to start off so yes that's there but i'm also doing amazing how do you feel in your body I feel a little cloggy in my head a little groggy but i also feel really connected mm. to to my body I feel in my body and of my body um, and that feels really fucking good yeah <laughs> amazing yes um, a couple things that I would love to sh- share with the audience first is um, will you share a little bit about what you do in the world because I feel I find it's really inspiring mm. activating and I would love Thank to just you. share that yeah, so I hmm. It's funny, like I always feel hesitant to talk about what I do first because it's like we really define our work as ourself. Mm. And also within that, I really love the fact that my work is a direct reflection of my life. So I'll speak about how I orient myself in my life. So I'm very interested and devoted. I say I'm a devotee of the shadow, basically. I love that. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm a devotee of the hidden, the suppressed, the denied aspects of self and the collective. Mm -hmm. And I I very much um, probe in the underworld. So I, I have a, a strong, natural vision and view of life in, a, in the undercurrents, in, out of the surface level. And it's not even that I'm like trying to look there, it's just there. It's like the color of the world that I look through, the lens, the lens that I look through and also having a beautiful connection to the body within all of that. So how does my sense of reality feel and express through my body? Mm. And I think that that's more where my placement is these days is embodied presence and my capacity to be really rooted in the present moment through my body. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, let's take a let's take a deep breath yeah, on that one. Yeah, let's take like. a deep breath. 
<laughs> I invite you to take a deep breath with us. <sighs> it's just so nice to find someone, or not find someone, I mean, we found, I think the universe <laughs> gave us to each other, but who is so like me in that way. Mm. Because when I talk to people, they're so in their heads, and I feel alien a lot of times when yeah. I relate through my body. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, this is, doesn't feel good in my body. Or, mmm, this feels really nice in my body. Yeah. Hey, let's do more <laughs> of that. So sorry, keep going. Yeah, so <clears throat> that that sense of being in touch with who I am through the body is what I'm devoted to. And my work centers these themes. So I have a school called the Somatic Institute for Women where we run educator and teacher trainings and it's the third year running this year we have 100 women in the training which is so beautiful because that for me is a reflection of how needed the work on somatics and trauma awareness and nervous system health and shadow work and sexuality is and so I, I train women um to learn how to feel safe to feel And that's done by a lot of nervous system regulation work. (coughs) And then the found what's really exciting in the way that I look at my work is that this work in the school is really foundational because it is about getting through programming and conditioning, social, cultural, religious, patriarchal, misogynistic, capitalistic programming that we've internalized and identify as who we are so a lot of my own embodied research and then that in in the work is about becoming aware of it and then finding our way our way back through the body and through presence into more of a natural way of being and from there finding out what our potential is because I feel that we need to move through quite a lot. It's not that our potential's not expressed anyway, but it can be very clogged up through cultural programming and conditioning and trauma that we're not in the full touch of, of our potential and capacity for expression. So that's where the personal development work kind of then shifts into soul work, I would say. That's amazing. Mm. <laughs> um. How do you feel? I want to move away from like, what do we do? Because I agree with you. (laughs) But I just think like what you are doing is like when I first, when we first were talking about it, I was like, wow, that's so amazing that you just do that. You know, like that is what you, that is your work that you're sharing with the world because I felt such a calling to do that. And then I think because of my programming, I like went into law and then I became a business consultant and I did all these like, things that I didn't care about that much and when the things that I feel very connected to is my body and my sexuality and being a woman in the world you know and so it feels nice for me to like start coming back around to it and then I see you and it's very inspiring that you're just like Mm. I'm just doing this this is who (laughs) I am in the world and Mm. and I know it's doing really beautiful things for people for Mm. women um, do you feel called to work specifically with women Yeah, I think that (coughs) I had life just kind of put me there. I never was like, I want to work with women. It just started happening. And it all started in my sexuality, actually. So the when I came to this island, actually, to a particular yoga school, 11 years ago called (laughs) Agama Yoga. It was like the one we will not mention. Oh, she's mentioning it. Yes. (laughs) Keep going. Yeah. So I was studying psychotherapy at 19 and then one of Agama Agama teachers was in my training program in Australia and he would talk about this magical island that he would go to, to a tantric yoga school. And I was like, well, I'm going there. Mm -hmm. And I came and it was amazing. I spent eight years at the school and I became a tantra teacher but before all of that, I came to do level one at Agama and they were running women's groups. And the thought of a woman's group literally gave me diarrhea. 
like I felt so shut down of sitting in a group of women. Wait, why? Because it felt so unsafe. <laughs> because? Because women, w- ha- then I started to realize that I had never had good experiences with groups of women. I was basically slut shamed from the age of 12 from girls older than me. I always had beautiful girlfriends. Like I had a, I didn't have a bad relationship with women. There was an imprint of groups of women being unsafe. Okay. Yeah. So when yeah, I, I mean, everything's a lot, I was just like, oh, I didn't know that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it like my physiology would respond of like <laughs> my bowels just wanting to go haywire. It didn't happen, but I'm just giving you a sense of like the the experience in my body. It was like that's so unsafe. Groups of women are unsafe, and it took me a long time to really identify that and put it into words. And then I realized that I realized that I had been slut shamed because I looked as I am now, maybe with a few less wrinkles like this from 12 years old. So I had a juicy body, boobs, I was bleeding. I had a lot of sexual energy and sensuality and I had the male gaze upon me from such a young age. So I was sexualized really young. And then I was slut shamed by women, even when I was a virgin from so young, just because of my embodiment, which I wasn't aware of at the time. So I grew up getting the information that who I was wasn't safe around women. And it all came down to understanding that that was due to my sensuality and my sexuality. And of course, I had a lot of shadow. I was leaking my sensuality. Like there were a lot of things to clean up as well. But that's what eventually led me into working with women was to heal that because, of course, it's the archetypal journey of the wounded healer, what we are experiencing pain in, we're often the teacher of as well. So that set me on that path. And I also became a stripper to specifically be in an environment with women who were expressing their sexuality. So that was a huge process for me of being around women who were Um, being sensual and sexual in a space. And of course, there is like 99% shadow (laughs) in the sex industry world. But I had a really beautiful healing journey. I also had a really beautiful healing journey at Agama around being a woman um, and celebrating my sexuality with other women. And then, of course, years later, realizing the insane amount of misogyny that was infused in that school. Um, Yeah, that that's a whole different topic. But I'm just talking about my positive experiences there. I'm not advocating anything with the school. I totally disagree (laughs) with everything that has happened. But um, it really brought me into that space. And then I eventually started teaching therapeutic erotic dance classes to women. And that was the source of where I am today, 10 years later, running this work. And the sexuality and the erotic piece is like one element now. It's not the whole whole element. Mm -hmm. Can I share with you something that I've been getting downloaded about? I wanted to, so basically I wanted to ask you about this, but I thought it'd be really fun to talk about it on my podcast (laughs) too. Um, So I told you I had this Vedic astrology reading this last weekend and um, the guy was saying that it would be really good for me to work around anything related to sex. And this is something I've been getting like this download for for like a while, like since I started doing the play parties mm. and just feeling really comfortable in that space and feeling like I can hold the space for other people. I love doing this. I love helping empower people in their sexuality. Um, and the Vedic astrology guy was like, I think that you could, you know, yeah, you could be a stripper, you could be this thing, you could do like Tantra, you can do this. But I've never, it's like when you were doing the Tantra timeline, like I was like working in the, a law firm and like being, and I, I feel like I've passed that time where that is something like, you know, going to a yoga school and learning Tantra and being in that kind of community. It's like, I'm too woke for that now. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't. And also I think it's pe- like what you're saying, you find out eventually that a lot of these places are run by men and there's a lot of unhealthy programming that's still put into that so what that what's being called to me is to create more um like how you have created the somatic 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 institute Institute for women yeah um i 
I would love to create a, a physical space for women. Mm. And um, the, the name that's getting downloaded to me is like House of Pleasure Ooh. or the Pleasure House. Ooh. And have it be mm. like these pop-up experiences wherever I'm at in the world. Um, and I feel like this is what I did at the community space I had here, like the remote collective. It kind of turned into that. But the space itself wasn't activating for me. Like yeah. it's not, it wasn't like beautiful and like yeah, luxurious yeah, yeah. and everything. And so what I'm feeling called to do is to get a space when we're in Berlin this summer and have play parties like have it paid for by play parties yeah. and but then use it as a place for women to come and take workshops and nice. tantra and like um and also have like sexy like great gapsy type of yeah, parties cool. but completely run by women yeah and have like you know like erotic dancing and all this stuff but yeah. completely like empowering like for women nice. and like guys can come and be the wolf man and like worship yeah but like not you know it's all because i feel like there is something so much that women want about like, we want to be appreciated we want to be seen totally. we want to be empowered in our sexuality and share that with the world but in a way that we feel really safe yeah and so i keep coming and i think of like m like i was asking you about mama gina's book the other day mm. um this lady in the states who does like a goddess type of workshops and this and that, but she's like in her sixties and this is like old generation. And yeah. still like a lot of that stuff I've read in her books is like pussy power and this and that. And yeah. I'm like, I'm more about just, I don't want to say the normal girl, but I'm like, I'm a very grounded person. Yeah. I don't need to speak the language of Tantra, of like Shiva Shakti. Exactly. I, yeah. I'm like, we can just be cool, grounded, amazing women, but Absolutely. also super empowered in our sexuality. But I would love to know what you think about that idea because you have you also your projector <laughs> and like I love your feedback on it. I love it. Actually, one element that you spoke to is what I started out doing when I said that I was doing the therapeutic erotic dance classes. What I was doing at the end was making like a conscious strip club. So we would have I love this. We would have it was like a four day workshop that I was running looking at the shadow of sexuality, claiming sexuality, all these things. And then basically I realize whether most women want to admit it or not, they want to be a stripper or they want to be seen in their sexuality. And there's a lot of shame because of the Madonna whore split. So that, that Eve Lilith archetypal split where the virgin and the whore. And so having spaces where women can safely claim that because it's so pushed into the collective shadow or it's embedded with a lot of patriarchal femininity and this male gaze. So we're doing things for the male gaze. So having places that women can do it with other women and then be seen by men or by anyone else yeah, anyone. in that is so incredible and so life-changing. So I'm such a big advocate for anything that empowers women to connect to their sexuality and the the being seen element is actually really important because then we're claiming our desire to be seen and it's not in the shadow and it's not coming from a place of um performative ways of being that that are manipulative there's not i mean this is all human um, it's not to shame those elements, we all do it, but to be clear of like, I am a woman, I want to be seen in my sexuality, I want to be seen in my erotic power, and I like it as well. When we're honest and clear and direct about that in the way that we express ourselves, there is a shift in embodiment where women are actually claiming that sexual power and that erotic power because what we're normally doing is we're leaking it out in the prescribed way that men or let's say the patriarchal gays have sub, um, uh, provided to us. Mm -hmm. So spaces like this is like, for me, this is activism. This is sexual activism. Yeah, it feels rebellious. Yeah, I'm like, yeah it is. I feel like I feel really excited to do the first one in Berlin because yeah. of I love the vibe I mean I would love to come visit you in Amsterdam and see how that is well, well I have an amazing apartment that can <laughs> host these things <laughs> let's do I, I would be so up yes. for that um and because the 
I want to start doing more stuff online. I just um, uh, finished a course, and I'm, my next course is going to be around sexuality. Cool. But the thing that I would love to do is make it more of an investigative course. Like, okay, I'm going to go investigate this thing. Like, we're learning this together. <laughs> Here's what I've learned. You try this. Nice. Da, da, da. Because for me, everything I'm doing, I want to also be learning. Yeah. And maybe this is also me being a generator. Like you're a projector. You're like, I want to teach everyone. <laughs> I'm like, I'm on this journey to learn. And f- like, yeah. So I, I want to play and I yeah. would love to take people on the journey of like totally. me playing and, and growing in my own sexuality and stuff. So yeah. Yes. Well, I love it. Let's do one in Amsterdam. I love it. Um, for sure. House of Pleasure is coming to a town <laughs> near you soon by Brittany Bond. Yes. I love it. House of Pleasure by Brittany Bond. It's like it was already written <laughs> out. <laughs> like when you say it, it was like, well, obviously. That's what I love is like when you say something and it's like, well, obviously. <laughs> like that's already a thing, you know, just it's like just catching it. Yeah, so the timeline's catching up to it. I'm so into it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I can just see you on some like very flamboyant sort of bed <laughs> guiding people i don't know i've got the whole vision there's some fluoro pink in there that's what i know well have you gone to <laughs> kit kat recently where they opened the um if you don't know kit kat is a place in a sex <laughs> club in berlin but they made like a jazz club within kit kat no because they have something like that in there and that was my favorite oh, cool. room no they were i playing didn't jazz see that. music they had these like beds with like velvet ru- like oh, carpets cool. over it people were just like making out on there and lounging and i was like it felt very like Gary Gatsby and I was I so it. inspired by that. Yeah. Not necessarily inspired by Kit Kat in general, but I loved that room. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, funny, quick, funny story. I've been wanting to go to Kit Kat for like 10 years and I went last year for the first time and we were, me and my friend were really excited to go, me and my friend and her boyfriend and we got a little bit high and we went there and then we were like, yeah, okay, we're in Kit Kat and they're like, tonight is gay sex party. It's okay for you. And we were like, oh, Okay, okay, let, let, let's do it. So my, I, I didn't go to Kit Kat after. I remember I was going to come yeah, and meet we, you in Berlin. I went to Kit Kat because <laughs> you I were know. coming. <laughs> Basically, she was sta- living in Amsterdam and she was like, let's go to this Kit Kat on this specific night. And then I was like, we're doing it, we're doing it. And then you got sick and you couldn't make I know. it. But I know. It's all fine. We can go again. But I went in there. And, and how was it for you? It was, I mean, it was talking about sexuality. It was really interesting because... Firstly, it was really nice being a female body and not having a lot of men looking at me in a hypersexual space. So there was something that I was like, oh, cool. I can like experience myself as a woman in this way. Um, And number two, like the queer community is so much more fun than heterosexual people. I I feel like (laughs) so much like better at creating safe spaces. Oh, I just, I just love their frequency and embodiment. Mm -hmm. But what was really interesting is that it wasn't so queer. It was very gay. And I was sitting with the energy and I'm like, what is the energy in here? And I was like, oh, it's fuck energy. Mm. Like it was this fucking animalistic fucking energy and I went upstairs because I was like okay where are, where's all the sex like there's a lot of cocks hanging around but where is all the sex in Kit Kat and then I ended up like two hours later going upstairs and in the dark room and maybe you know it's double the size of my bedroom okay and they were like a hundred gay men having sex with each other and I went and I sat in the middle of course by myself. Did. Oh my god. <laughs> and I just was You're like, like meditating. I, no, I did. <laughs> and I was like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. And I was just like I even get shivers now because it was just like I love groups of bodies being sexual. And this is why I love group sexual experiences because you move there's something where it moves out of the personal Mm -hmm. and there's this transpersonal body erotic body Mm -hmm. that's happening and in that moment it was a strong fuck energy but it was still like this is really natural Mm -hmm. to have humans expressing themselves in that way and i find it sad that we have to go into these places where it's allowed And this is what I really want in community is to be able to feel that us making love 
is it's completely natural. Just like animals, like we don't shame dogs when they're having sex in the middle of the road, but if they're two people, then they get put in jail kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. The other day, Friday and I went to the beach at sunset and we made love on the beach. <laughs> and we both were what like... What beach were you at? Okay, you know how Hong Kong is getting like really um, dry? Like it's yeah. going out. But at sunset, if you go out to the sea and you go left, there's no one there. And okay. like the people are super I'll far away. I'll take a left next time yeah. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and we brought a towel. And we were just like laying down nice. on the sand. And then I was like... You know, and he was like... <gasps> we are not allowed to do this because he's so German sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like... And he's a Virgo, you told yes, me. Yes, so he's very much like, this is naughty. And I'm like... Oh, babe, you're dating a Virgo German. I know. Wow. But <laughs> I can't wait for you to meet him. Yeah, no, I'm very excited. He's like an alien German yeah, Virgo. Yeah, so that's cool. Like my dad. My dad's an alien yes. German. <laughs> uh, and that's how they met is he went to his <laughs> workshop. My boyfriend Faraday has met Monty's dad <laughs> in a workshop that Monty's dad was organizing here on the island. <laughs> so funny the mm. world is so connected yes um i love what you just said about like having it be so natural in like wanting it to be so natural desiring it to be so natural in community to be safe and seen and open about yeah. our sexuality because during covid when i was um doing a lot of the remote collective like the community space stuff here <coughs> I felt that the people that were attracted initially before I started doing the play parties were people that were just very closed around their sexuality. Mm. There was like the Tantra people, but the people I was uh, attracting on the island were like the digital nomads and like the people that already have families and, yeah. you know, like n I w <laughs> as normal as you can be from a Copenhagen yes. standpoint. <laughs> yes. And then when I started organizing the play parties, I was like, oh, this is my tribe. Yeah. And it wasn't that I wanted to fuck everyone all the time. It was just that these people are more comfortable in their sexuality we can talk about it we can be open about it there was even one point where we were all kind of dating each other I remember you and I having a conversation about someone that we were sleeping with at the same time <laughs> and like it was just so safe it was like yeah. we everyone knew what was going on with each other and we could support each other in it yeah. and that's how I wanted my tribe to be that is exactly. that's what I choose um so we were just talking about like making Copa Young like a home home base of like having a community because you and I share this um, desire to have an actual village, like a physical village where yeah. we're growing our own food. Exactly. Um, so I would love to hear more about like just share with people about like your viewpoint on community and village and because mm. I know we were just talking about before the podcast started and I would love to. Yeah, I mean... Like, are you feeling called to have Copenhagen be that place? I'm called to wherever life wants to place me. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of had to let go of imposing my constructs and ideas onto what the thing is that I want and more focusing on what I want to serve mm -hmm. and that will life will kind of place me where that's needed and you know I was just saying I had this astro cartography yeah. reading and it's so clear like often I think like I don't even know if I have a choice in any of this because it's so clearly laid out mm -hmm. and and I I like that I like feeling like I'm here for very intentional and specific purpose mm -hmm. and I'm surrendered to that so whether that's here or someone else or somewhere else but what i do know is that when there is i've so i've been spending time in tamara last year oh, yeah. how was that yeah well it was amazing just like <laughs> quickly catch people up, we both got accepted to a community leadership program in an eco village in tamara that's been going tamara's been going 45 for years 45 fucking yeah, years and I didn't end up going and Monty went yes. and then you ended up going back later in the summer and doing something else with so them? I did their one month community course mm -hmm. um, and then I did their love school and then I was lucky enough mm -hmm. to influence them yeah I, I was really proud teach, of you I know because it was a first time for this community to teach trauma and the nervous system Amazing. awareness because I got quite close with a couple of the people and they started to see. And it w I was really, because as a projector, I need to be invited to things. Yeah. So I was just kind of like 
dealing with someone that was activated in trauma and noticing that there was really no one around to support them in the right Mm. way and little things and conversations started open. So I went back and gave, I think, a three-day trauma workshop. I'm going again in July to do their activism retreat and then there's now conversation to do another trauma training with them. So this is really cool. Um, But being at Tamara was really beautiful because they talk about this idea of the morphogenetic field. Mm -hmm. And the morphogenetic field is basically when a group of people are embodying something that reverberates out into the world. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's not a new concept, but what I really loved about feeling that is understanding that when a group of people get together and they're intentionally embodying something, they are in service. Mm. So a lot of people go into this idea of like, I don't want to be in a bubble. And mm-hmm. that's a big thing about being here in Kobangan. It's a bubble. It's a bubble. And there is something beyond the physical that's happening with shifting frequency Mm -hmm. or the energetics of what you're doing. So that for me, being in a community where we're not just living together and growing our own food, but actually intentionally going into embodied research. And my research has a lot, my desire for community has a lot of its center in love. Mm -hmm. So because we all want to belong and we all want to be loved and love is one of the biggest woundings that we have. But in order to understand love, we need to also go into deprogramming, conditioning and programming and trauma and all these things. So having a center in that way and also understanding what our sole purpose is in community um, for for service. So there are a lot of concepts and words, but um, I'm also happy just like me and a couple, me and my lover, whoever that is, falling mm-hmm. in love with another couple and us just have babies together <laughs> and loving each other and co-parenting and I growing food together. <laughs> so that's plan B. I love that. <laughs> Basically. Right now my dog, Afro, and I, she has, I have a co-parent with her mm. on the island and I always joke that she's like my first child that I'm yeah. co-parenting <laughs> yeah. with because... I've never had a romantic relationship with this person, but we literally are like, it feels like we are like her parents, you know, like we have like check-ins about her (laughs) and like make sure she's okay. Make sure everything. And I was like, wow, this would be so beautiful to do this in a community where people are like, and I feel like him and I are equally committed to her well-being. And I know that she is a dog and not a child, but I, it's She's the same. a being. Yeah, and it's the same element. You know, they say animals are your first children. Exactly. So. Oh, that was the amazing thing about Tamara is that they've got a big focus, which I'm really inspired about, is raising free children. Mm. And the thing that I loved the most is that they have the mum and the dad, but they're about breaking, not breaking up the nuclear family, but redefining the shift from being in a nuclear family setting to a community family setting, raising children. So they have their mum and the dad, but then they have (coughs) like the grandparents and then they have like three elders Mm. that they also relate to Mm. and they spend time with these elders. So they diversify the leadership of adults beyond the parents. I love that. It's so amazing. And like that means the kids have way more of a support network. Exactly. And this is how we used to be in tribes, you know, like yeah. when we were actually like hunters and gatherers or wherever, like back in the day, we, we weren't exactly, we weren't just with our, like they say the nuclear family has only happened since the agricultural yeah. uh, revolution. And that's only a couple of centuries compared to how much we've as humans have exactly. been on the earth. So it's a very new concept to, you know, get married, have kids, and only be relating to that single... Yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation (laughs) around marriage. I have to... You have to go. go Okay, so (laughs) I'm very excited. But I'm available to be married by you if that's ever an option. We can (laughs) get married. (laughs) I mean, I'm down for many opportunities (laughs) and connections. I'm chosen and free. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I I want to end it by just saying that I'm very grateful that you're in my life and I love having such a powerful inspiring woman around mm. even if we haven't recently spent that much time together like I like I was saying before the podcast I'm like 
I don't care like when we end up hanging out like we're spiritually connected yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. like I always kind of know what's going on I can feel you I feel like I kind yeah, of know yeah, what's yeah. going on I keep up with you on social media we know that we love each other and yeah. that's the most important yeah. thing and yeah. like at any moment we can just create things together or hang out or yeah. vibe or make out you know whatever yeah. whatever is flowing I don't I feel like I feel like no, like when you came to the play parties before, you were in more of a. Um, I was flogging people in, in yeah. the bedroom, <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember you being like, "I'm more internal tonight." Yeah, which is cool. I'm I'm a voyeur in a lot of these That's places. Great. Yeah, I really enjoy just seeing sexuality mm. being expressed. I'm definitely an expedition exhibitionist. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. like everyone. <laughs> I know. Watch, watch. <laughs> okay, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. And um, if you're listening, I hope you enjoyed. We had a lot of fun making yes. this episode. <laughs> Thank you for having bye. me.